Shalom, Shalom Israel. This is Brother Eber from Israelite Apostolic Heritage. I'm here with Brother Yarden. Shalom. And today we're going to be doing a breakdown on Baruch 4. So first and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Yahawashai. And I'd like to give blessings out to all the men of Yah that are out there pushing this truth across the four corners of the globe. And we're going to get straight into this. And hopefully you get a bit of edification from it, a bit of enlightenment, a bit of truth from it. And um, yeah, so enjoy. And um, make sure you have your Bibles with you because um, when you're reading it, it will help you pick up stuff more. Um, you'll understand things more and you'll be able to like um, pick like little pick bits out and things will start coming to you as you're reading. So we're going to start reading from Baruch 4 and um, we're reading from verse 1. And it says, this is the book of the commandments of Yah and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So it's making it clear that anyone that keeps the law, they're going to come to life. But whoever doesn't, whoever leaves it, won't come to life. So the first precept that I want to bring you to is in Deuteronomy and it's Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1 so if you could get that for me Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1 because it's important to understand that although we are under grace now through Hamashiach because he's given us grace a grace period so that we can get ourselves right so yeah we won't be able to keep the law in its entirety but we should be attaining to rehearse the righteous act so we should be trying to do the things that we can do so if you just want to read that for me, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1, please. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Most High have driven thee, Salakia, to where the Most High thy power have driven thee, verse 2, and shalt return unto the Most High thy power, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I commanded thee this day. Thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Most High thy power will return thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Most High thy power have scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of the earth, from thence will the Most High thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Most High thy power will bring thee into a land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. Um, go down to verse 19. Go down to verse 19. Cause... Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life. So, so... Just, just to cut you, sorry to cut you off there, but this is pointing out Moses is saying to the children of Israel that when he's setting the law before them, he's setting before them life or death. Therefore, choose life. Mm. So within the law, it can either be life to you or death to you, but you have to decide that for yourself mm. because if you follow it then it will be life unto you. But if you don't follow it, then it will be death unto you. Mm -hmm. And now is the time for us to get ourselves correct with the Most High. Now is the time. Now we've got the chance to do it. It's time for that. Because the Most High is lifting the curses up off, off of Israel. And it's time for us to turn back to him and start to begin to rehearse the righteous acts once again. So that way, when he returns... So when Hamashat returns, he finds faith. Like he says, will he, will he find faith when he returns? How is he going to find faith when he returns? We have to come back and realise that we have to do that which is right in the sight of the Most High. So then I'm going to take us to a, another scripture which is relevant to this. this um, Baruch chapter 4 says that this is the book of the commandments of Yah and the law. So where else in scripture does it talk about a book? a book of law or the, a book of the Most High. Well, if we turn to Isaiah um, chapter 34 and read from verse 16, it says, Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out of the book of the Most High and read, Not, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth 
it have commanded and his spirit it have gathered them so for us as israelites when we take up the book of the law when we keep the commandments and the laws of the most high then everything the most high has spoken will come to pass and he will gather us now when it talks about the gathering us as Israelites, if we're coming to the faith, we understand that there was a dispersion or a diaspora of Israelites who have been scattered to the four corners. So if you want to come back to your heritage, if you want to come back to your nationality, then we need to begin to start reading the book and looking into the commandments and keeping them to the best of our ability. Because the scripture says that the Messiah kept to the commandments. He says, he kept, I've kept all my father's commandments. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we'll continue reading on. In Baruch. So Baruch chapter 4 verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. So we've got to walk in the presence of the light. And what I want to do is I want to take you to Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Because that's a very important scripture. And it will really open your eyes so we're going to read Isaiah 60 and 1. If you can get that for me and just read it for me, please. Mm -hmm. so lucky. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Most High is risen upon thee. So it's saying, arise and shine, for your light is come. Because when Hamashiach came, he became the, he became our light. What did he say when he came? I am the light of the world. Mm. But then what did he also say in Matthew 5 and 14? Let me grab that for you. We turn into Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. And it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So we are also the light of the world. But that's only when we're following what he taught us. Mm. So we have to follow, because he's the light of the world. So if we are um, doing the same thing. If we're Christ-like. Yeah, yeah, if we're Christ-like, then we also become the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And if you want the scripture where Hamashek says he's the light of the world also, all you've got to do is go to John chapter 8 and verse 12, because that's where it is. And you can mm. read that for yourself and you can get understanding. Because we've got to begin to walk in the presence of the light walk in the presence of Yahweh because mm. Yahweh sent us the light and he sent us his only begotten son he sent us Yahweh Shai that we might be able to finally get the spirit of the law so we're going to continue reading in Baruch and read, read verse 3 verse 3 give not thine honour to another nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation so we can't be giving our our um our jobs and stuff over to the other nations because when when Hamashek was around, we had an Edomite in in power. Mm. We had Herod a king, as a, Herod Herod as a king, and he was an Edomite, and so he shouldn't have been there. And you had Romans up in the land acting like they had had power over us, and the only reason. They even could do what they was doing is because we weren't following the law, statutes, and commandments entirely correctly, and we have to understand that, and we can't be, we can't let the other nations take up our customs and our book and do them because it's for us to do it, and then afterwards, once we are doing it, then we can then we can teach them what to do, because we are meant to be the teachers. And what I want to do is I want to take you to uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. And I'm just going to read that for you. And it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again to rend you. Turn again and rend you. So, like here. so if you read that, you understand that it says don't don't give that which is separate because we are the holy and separate nation. It says don't give that onto dogs because it's not for, it's not for them. Mm. It's not for them. So we have to we have to teach ourselves now and we have to give it to the Israelites that are scattered across the four corners so that we begin to understand what we have to do. And then there's another scripture there as well. 
that um that's important as well because it's in um Matthew chapter 15 and I'm just going to find it for you and I'm going to read that for you as well. And while you're finding that, I've got a scripture because people are going to ask, well, how do you know that these these um judgments or laws or these oracles of the Most High were given to us then? And we'll have to go to scripture because scripture says in Isaiah 28 and 10, precept must must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So if you want to turn to Psalm 147, reading from 19, it says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any other nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. So the same scripture in Baruch tells Jacob to take hold of his of of his birthright, of his judgment, of what he's supposed to be doing, the oracles of the Most High. So here, this precept lines up with it perfectly. Yeah, so I've got the scripture in Matthew chapter 15, verse 26. And at this point, this is when the um, Canaanite woman comes to her Mashiach and he doesn't even, he doesn't even like, acknowledge her and he just he just completely blanks her and when she when he finally talks to her this is what he says to her so we're going to read from Matthew chapter 15 and verse 26 and he says but he answered and said it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs so he's saying it's not right for me to take what is for the children and who are the children? The children are the children of the Most High. It's not meat for him to take the children's bread, what is of the children's, and give it to the dogs. Because he's saying, it's not for them. And it w it wasn't for them. And when we finally take up what is ours, when we finally take up what the Most High has given us, then we can teach it onto other people. But right now, we can't teach it because we ain't keeping it ourselves. So that's why it's time for us to get back to the Most High and get back to our customs and culture that the Most High can see that we are repentant and that we want to turn back to the Most High. So if we, we go back into Baruch. We're reading from verse 4. Yeah. And it says, Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. O Israel, happy are we for things that are pleasing to Yah are made known unto us. So, we should be happy mm, because the things of the Most High, the things that are pleasing to Him have been made known to us. Mm -hmm. Who else has it been made known to? It hasn't been made known to anyone Any else. Mm -hmm. And the, the scripture I want to go to now is Psalm 147, verse 19 to 20. If read. you just want to get that. Oh, did you just, yeah, yeah, that's just what we read. just read. Yeah, so, read it again. So this is Psalm 147, verse 19 to 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. And, and there you go. He hasn't dealt so with any other nation. He's, he's given his statutes and his judgments unto us. Mm. We are the ones that have known it. We are the ones that he's bestowed. That's why this work should be honourable unto you. Because if you know this stuff, then that means that the Most High wants you to know it. And he's the one that created all things. So it should be honourable unto you. And another scripture that I want to take you to is in Ecclesiasticus um, chapter 24. And if you just want to get that and read that. So this is Ecclesiasticus chapter 24. And I'll read from verse 1 just so we get a bit of context. It says, Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. So here it's saying wisdom came out of the mouth of the Most High. And it's, it's giving wisdom a, a female character in this case now wisdom is related to the holy spirit or the ruach the set apart spirit and it's um related to understanding and wisdom now we're going to see according to ecclesiasticus who this is given to so we're going to jump down to verse 
um, 7. And it says, with all these I sought rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? Verse 8, so the creator of all things, so that's Yahweh, the creator of all things, Yahweh Bahashim Hamashak Yahweh gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. He created me from the beginning, before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so I was established in Zion. Likewise, in the beloved city he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. So here we understand that there's one people or one inheritance where the tabernacle of the wisdom and the spirit was made to dwell, and that was with Jacob, also known as the Israelites, and in Jerusalem and Zion. So those are very important things. They're synonymous, Israel and Zion. So it's important for you to understand who the people are and where the Most High's crib is or where his place is. But that's another topic, so we can jump back to um, Baruch, unless you've got something to add yeah. on that. So um, another scripture that we need to go to as well is in Matthew chapter 13. And I want to read from verse 10. But before I do that, I want you to understand that at this point, Hamashiach was speaking in parables and his disciples decided to ask him, why, why are you speaking in parables? And... We're going to get to the answer when we read it. So we're reading from verse 10 and it says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So it's only given to a specific set of people and it's only given to those people who are open to understanding because at that time, he was talking to a load of people, talking to Pharisees, Sadducees, and all, 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 a lot of people that were in the land of Israel, and certain people weren't accepting it. So even as an Israelite, if you are not open to accepting the things of, of Hamashiach, or the teachings of Hamashiach, which by the way, he came in the name of Yahweh, he didn't come in the name of anyone else anyway, he came in the name of the Father, so when he spoke these things, he didn't speak them of his own accord. He spoke them according to what the Most High had sent him to do and to say because he came in his name. So he didn't come to do his own will. He says it, he says, I didn't come to do his, he didn't come to do his own will, he came to do the will of the Father. So it's important that we understand that. But it's given to those that, it's given to those to understand it, the ones that are open to it, the ones that can understand the parables. And that's why, in Isaiah 28 and 10 it says line upon line precept upon precept because when you start to realize that you've got to read the whole book to get understanding then then the book truly opens up to you because you'll find understanding through precepts that are scattered throughout there mm. and th there'll be one precept in one end of the bible one precept in the other end of the bible and that will give you a whole understanding mm -hmm. But you can't just go off one line and one verse because that's not how you can get understanding. That's what they do in um, Christianity. They'll spend a whole sermon. <coughs> so like you're based off one verse of scripture and talk for hours and hours on it. When really and truly to, to understand the scripture, you need to know the whole book. Even Messiah says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. So we have to understand that you can't just take one specific part it must be precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little mm -hmm. so we're going to read verse 5 in Baruch Baruch chapter 4 verse 5 be of good cheer my people the memorial of Israel I'm talking to the remnant of Israel continue verse 6 ye were sold to the nations not for your destruction but because ye move ya to Wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. So, we were sold unto the nations, but he says it wasn't for our destruction. And in in the scripture, the Mosai says that he will punish us in measure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that scripture up for you, because he says that he'll destroy all, he'll destroy the nations completely, but he won't destroy us. So I'm going to bring that up for you.
while he's getting that, you got to understand that same scripture talks about us being sold unto our enemies. Now, the, the scripture should be popping into your mind. Precepts should be popping into mind. Who are the enemies? Who did we get sold to? Who got sold? This is a common scripture among um, Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, people who subscribe to being descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. And this scripture is in Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And it reads, And the Most High shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way, way of, by by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So here it gives you an understanding of the people who were dispersed, who got sold to their enemies, and it uses the term Egypt. Now we know or we can spiritually um, understand what Egypt is because in um Exodus, I believe it says and explains that Egypt means house of bondage. And I'll have the scripture up on the screen for you so you can read that. Yeah, so I've got that scripture now and it's in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 11. And it's to do with the fact that it wasn't for our destruction that we went in into captivity. And so let me read it then. So it's Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Most High to save thee though i make a full end of all nations with what i have scattered thee yet will i not make a full end of thee but i will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished so he's saying that he'll correct us in measure so when we went into captivity when he put us in that it was just for correction it was there to teach us a lesson saying if if this is what you're going to do if you're going to go on to the other nations worship their powers and all that then this is what's going to happen you're going to be the bottom and not the head and he mentioned all that in Deuteronomy 28 when he mentioned the curses and all those curses befell us because we weren't following them so you've got to understand that it's all for correction and although he said you'll put an end to all the nations he wouldn't leave us utterly unpunished so he'll correct us in measure so you got to understand that if we go off, the Most High will correct us. But it's like the scripture says that um, as as many as he loves, he rebukes and chastens. Mm-hmm. So you know, he, you know he loves us because he's rebuked us mm. and he's calling us back mm-hmm. to him. Because otherwise, if he didn't, then did he really love us? Calm. So let's continue then. And we'll continue um, verse 7 in Baruch, in Baruch 4. Baruch chapter 4 verse 7 For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to Yah Yeah so you know like I just said um, the, most, the most high corrected us because what we were doing is is Because um, if you read in Jose It says that we went um, whoring after other, other gods and other powers From other nations and stuff like that So I mean this is what the Gentiles were doing, sacrificing to other powers, other devils, their their powers. And we were going and doing that. And uh, what I want to do is I want to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. So as I'm pulling that up, if you just pull that up. So we've got 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 20. And it says. Do I have that up right? One second. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 20. says. But I say. That the things which the Gentiles sacrifice. They sacrifice to devils. And not to Yah. And I would not. That ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Most High and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Most High to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So it's saying you can't partake with the devil and partake with the Most High. It's either one or the other. And he's, he's making it blatantly clear that the Gentiles, that's what they were doing. They, 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 they're not, um, they, they, 
worship devils because they are deceivers. They make out that they like they are powers, but they are powers which are no powers, like the scripture says. So we pro we did provoke them also by by sacrificing unto devils because we were following their customs and their teachings. We did provoke them also, and look what happened. And he said he was going to provoke us to jealousy because he we provoked him. I've got a precept for that. Bear with me. Okay, it's if you want to pull second, it up. Second Edrus. If you want to turn there with me. Second Edrus, chapter 1. So lucky I'm getting there. Second Edrus chapter 1 and I'm going to read um, from verse 6 it says because the sins of their fathers are increased in them they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange powers am not Can I you read that again and it says because of the sins of their fathers are increased in them for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange powers so this just makes complete perfect sense. So it links directly with that scripture to say when a lot of the time what happens with man, um, we tend to forget. And because we forget things and you'll find that w um, women tend to remember more things. You'll notice if you hang around women, they'll remember all the um, um, days or plans and everything. So when you speak to them, they'll be able to remember stuff. However, we tend to forget because those things ain't important. Our job as the man is to remember the spiritual thing to remember the feast days, to remember the things of the Most High, so we can teach that to our family. But here we can see that forgetting is a problem with man. So if we forget those things, we are offering on, we start begin to offer unto strange gods, and that's how we provoke the Most High to wrath. And that's what we're aiming not to do. So it's important to build up your spiritual um, memory, so you've got a better memory, especially when it comes to the things of the Most High. If you're remembering to keep Sabbath, you're remembering to prepare food the night before and remembering that we can um, be the people who push the things of the Most High, not the worldly or the um, the flesh stuff, but we remember the spiritual stuff. So that was my preceptor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that precepts with the next with the next scripture because it's talking about forgetting. And it says it in verse... So if you want to read verse 8 then. So lucky I gotta get back to Baruch. <laughs> yeah, I'll read it. Go on. Ye have forgotten the everlasting Yah, the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem mm. that nursed you. So it's, it's like it's like it said in the scripture, because the sins of our fathers were increased in us, we forgot the most high. Mm. And we had we can't we can't let ourselves be driven away from the most high again. Because this is our last chance. There's no, no, there's not another chance after this. So we have to get ourselves right now. And another scripture I want to take you to is in Deuteronomy chapter nine, and verse seven. Get me to read that. Yeah, if you get that for me. Because this is why, like, when the, when we've got this culture, when we've got our culture, when we've got these feast days, they're set up in, in memoriam. They're set up. So for us to remember, mm. like Passover was to remember when we were taken out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. it, it enables us to remember the Most High. Every single thing we do. Salakia as well, if you think everything's a token to help us remember. So fringes, when you see brothers and uh, the Akiam and um, the Akotis in fringes, um, they're there as a memorial, as a token to help us remember to keep the commandments. So not only is it culture, it's a token for remembering. Everything is about remembering. Make sure we remember the things of the Most High. I've got that scripture. Okay, Just let me know. Read. Me. This is Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7. It says, Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Most High thy power to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Most High. So he's telling you to remember and, and don't and not. don't and don't forget mm -hmm. when 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 we drove him to anger, because we know what happens when we drive him to anger. Like when um, when when he was giving us the manna in the wilderness, and we were complaining about it. Mm. 
Many and times. then what happened then he gave us he gave us me and as soon as they bit into it they died mm -hmm. because there's nothing more that, than you need that, than what the most high is giving you no. you don't need anything else outside of him and Moses was getting the Ten Commandments and they were making a golden calf and worshipping other gods and the thing is if if we let ourselves forget the position we're in and the time we're in like they knew where Moses was and knew he was going to um, speak with the Most High or make prayers. And yet, because they forgot or or got distracted in that time, then they began to worship other gods and the winner. And that's 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 the things, those are the things that provoke the Most High to wrath. Mm -hmm. So we're going to read um, verse 9 now in Baruch 4. Baruch chapter 4. We just read 9, didn't we? Did we? Was it 9? No. So like, yeah, read um, Baruch chapter 4, verse 9. For when she saw the wrath of Yah coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion. Yah have brought upon me great mourning. Yeah, so this is talking about the land. And because it says, Ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you in verse 8. It says, For when she saw the wrath of Yah coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion. Yah have brought upon me great mourning because if you see the way um jerusalem is now it's desolate mm. and it, it's put mourning on it but and it's, it's a warning to us when we had famine and pestilences it's because we weren't following the law statutes of the law statutes and commandments of the most high so he brought pestilences and famines on the land those are warnings those are that was that was mourning to tell us it was a morning and a warning <laughs> to tell us we've got to get ourselves right mm. every time and the most i even told us i bought famine on the land because you did this mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. so it was for us to correct ourselves and right now th the land the land is is desolate still but as we go up and as we start to keep the three feasts which the Most High commanded all the men to go up, then the land will get healed. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to also do that. And if you listen to some of our podcasts, and you'll get some understanding on that. But um, a precept that I want to go to is in Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 12. So I'm just going to pull that up. And yeah, so this is talking about the, the famine and pestilences. So, so let me just read that for you. Alright. So Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse 12. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence and with the famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw out the sword, draw out a sword after them. So you can see that we were gonna die from famine and pestilences, and the most I put that in the land as a warning to us. And then there was some that was gonna fall by the sword, and then there was some that were gonna be scattered, that were gonna that were gonna flee, and be scattered into all parts of the earth. Mm. And then the curses will follow them. The sword. Is the curses the sword will follow them, and the Most High, the Most High used the nations as the sword, so that the curses would follow us wherever we went, and that's why now we're at the bottom of all nations wherever we are, because the sword followed us no matter where we went, so we couldn't flee from the curses, because they were assigned to us. Because how else were we supposed? To, how else were we supposed to know? Mm -hmm. who we are mm -hmm. unless we had a sign so another scripture that I want to go to is in Jeremiah chapter 24 and verse 10 do you want to just get that for me yeah Jeremiah chapter 4 24 and verse 10 24 Verse 10. This is Jeremiah chapter 24 from verse 10. And it says, And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, 
till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. So you see, he was going to bring pestilence and famine until he took us off the land. Mm. That was great. That's great morning. Mm -hmm. That's the great morning. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was there to warn us to say, because if we weren't, if we weren't doing things right, then the land wouldn't flourish. But if we were doing things right, then the land would flourish. Mm. And the land would be running as it's supposed to. There wouldn't be a famine in the land. And and if there was, we wouldn't be struggling. Mm. Either because the Most High would warn us and tell us. And that's the thing, a lot of the time, remember we the scriptures watch and pray. A lot of the time, those pestilences, the famines on lands are there to let you know something is off. Same way you have your body. If, you, if you're sick, you know something's off. You've got a cold, maybe you went outside and you've caught a bug from someone. Something's gone wrong. And those um, those famines and these um, these pestilences that come upon lands are signs that something's going wrong. And the Most High puts them there. And that's a morning. So if you read this um, Baruch 4, it's very poetic because it's talking from the position of Israel from Jerusalem. And it's talking about Israel or Jerusalem as a woman. And she's watching us being taken away. And it, it literally, the land literally watched us get taken from the land and cursed by the Most High for not keeping his commandments. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue in Baruch 4 and read verse 10. Read from verse 10. Baruch chapter 4 verse 10. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. 70 AD. Yet, yeah, because we understand that um, if we weren't talking about 70 AD, then, and we were talking about Africa, where we got taken in the transatlantic slave trade, then the land wouldn't have seen that happen to us. So it can't be talking about that time. This time must be talking about in 70 AD, where we went into captivity, and some of the tribes were taken captive and taken away, because the land witnessed it. So you got to understand when the scriptures are speaking and be able to tie up historical events and points to make sense of it. Because if the land saw us, then it wasn't the transatlantic slave trade. This was 70 AD and the siege. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Um, ja Baruch chapter 4, verse 11. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate. Because they departed from the law of Yah. So like like I said, because we weren't following the law, statutes and commandments of the Most High, the Most High brought pestilences and famine on the land and it's left desolate because of our sins. Mm. So we've got to understand that when we start doing the things which the Most High said, then he'll replenish the land. That's why it says when we turn back onto him, he'll, he'll heal our land. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've got to turn back to him. So, first scripture I want to go to is in Zechariah 12 and 3. And if you get me 2 Kings 21 and 13. So, you get me 2 Kings 21 and 13. I'll get to Zechariah 12 and 3. Second Kings 21 and 13. So, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people be gathered together against it. So here you can see that it's, it's it's yeah because it says the scripture says sorry that it says let not, not, no man rejoice over me so a lot of these nations have gone down there and they've they've parted the land of the most high but it says let no man rejoice over me because it's in a it's in a state of mourning that's why it's desolate so the most high said he's gonna make it a burdensome stone mm. unto them mm -hmm. So, whoever tries to take the land that isn't Israel or tries to make it their business when it's not their business, 
it's going to break them in pieces because it's not for them. The land wasn't given to them. It was given to a specific lineage mm. through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So it's important that we understand that no one else can take that land. And this is why when we go up there three times a year, that's why he says thrice in a year shall all your men children come up and then he will drive out the nations before us. Mm -hmm. Because that's when he'll start doing that when we start doing those three pilgrimage feasts because he'll make the land undesirable to them. Mm -hmm. And that's and and that hasn't happened yet because there's there's still people in the land that aren't supposed to be there. So it's showing you that this is just the beginning of a prophecy of mm. that prophecy of them being taken at land because they won't they won't desire it. And for when, the people who have don't understand, there's a reoccurring firm throughout the scriptures of marriages, men and women. Now this scripture here is taking a different standpoint. It's saying the land is a wife, a widow. And because we got taken away, the husband's died and we've gone away from her. So it's saying no other person or no other nation can come in and take the land and enjoy that land while the land's widowed, while we're not there. We, they have to wait for us, either us to come back or be that, that husband. We're the only people who can be husbands to that land. And when we're husbands to the land, then the land will start to flourish again. And like Brother Eber just brought out, that happens when we start keeping those feet, when we start coming up and keeping those feasts on specific times because by us keeping our sabbat shabbats or sabbaths on those days then the land will find rest and it will be able to produce and be flowing with milk and honey as the scriptures will say yes if you read um second kings then second kings chapter 21 verse 13 and i will stretch over jerusalem the line of samaria and the punishment and the plummet salakia of the house of Ahab and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish wiping it and turning it upside down and I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies so so you see the most I was saying is going to wipe Jerusalem like a dish and wipe it like a plate and that many was gonna completely just wipe the land clean, and that's why the land, because we've been kicked out, the land can now enjoy her sabbaths mm-hmm. because we're not there, we're not there um, working the land when we're not supposed to be, so the land can now enjoy her sabbaths. But what's what's important is the fact that in that scripture he's talking about the fact that he was gonna make it desolate. So, when he did that, he really, he really did make it desolate. He really did wipe it clean, because he had to take us out of the land to clean it, mm. because we weren't keeping his his law, such as the commandments. Which is why now we've got to learn to keep. That's why we've got to rehearse the righteous acts, so that when he comes, and he and he gives us a new heart, then this time we'll be clean before the Most High, and then the land will begin to flourish as it's supposed to Mm -hmm. but we have to get ourselves right first and foremost and we can't depart from the law of the most high again so you have to stay on the on the law and it's important that we um it's just important that we understand that the law is holy because we're not going to be able to keep it but at least understand that it is the right thing at least understand that it is the right thing because christ hamashiach he said he didn't come to do away with it. He came to fulfill the law, which is in um, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. He said he came to fulfill it. So it's important that we understand that we have to have faith in Hamashiach, but we have to also know that the law is is just and right. Mm, that's the so, song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. So although although we can't keep all the law, Although we can't keep all the law, we still have a chance of making it in. Calm. But we can't we, we can't negate Hamashiach Mm-mm. because he is he is the one that is giving that is, is helping us to have a second chance. Mm-hmm. So if we follow him and we get the spiritual understanding of why we keep the law, then when when we finally when, when when the grace period is over 
and we have to keep the law in its entirety, we are ready for that. Mm-hmm. Because right now, in the lands of our captivity, we can't do it exactly as it's supposed to be done. But then when we finally do go back to the land and we do become autonomous and we do have a king, we do have a king, but he's just not here yet. Come. But when he, when he returns, then we'll have to keep the law in its entirety. But it's time for us to learn what we have to do. So what I want to do is I want to just go to one more scripture. It's in Leviticus. I've got that. And Leviticus chapter 26, mm-hmm. verse 33. You got it, yeah? Yep. And just read that for me. This is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 33. And it says, And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath as long as it lieth desolate. And ye be in your enemy's land. Even then, the land shall the, shall the land rest and enjoy her sabbath, sabbaths. So, like I said, man, the land's gonna the land is enjoying her sabbaths, and it's laid desolate, mm. and we've been taken out, and that's because we weren't doing the laws, statutes, and, and commandments. commandments. Mm-hmm. And it's that simple. We weren't doing the instructions, the Torah that the Most High set out for us, and. Although we can't keep them now, just remember that it is the right thing. Although we're not in the right situation, it is the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why the scripture says, take up the book of the law and read. Take Mm -hmm. up the book of the Lord and read. So we need Mm -hmm. to understand these things because even though we might not be able to keep them perfectly now, you have to remember that when the kingdom comes in, we will be keeping them, whether you like it or not. Because the Messiah is going to come and he's going to bring authority and order. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's outside of that order will be put to death. Simple, point blank, period. You're either under Messiah, under Yahweh, or you're an enemy. And Mm -hmm. I know whose side I'd rather be on. I'm not Mm going to be an enemy of Yah, that's for certain. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back into Baruch 4 then and we'll read from verse 13. And he read 13. Baruch chapter 4, verse 13. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the way of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. So there there you go. Again, we didn't know his statutes. We didn't walk in his commandments. So he's just reiterating why he did what he did. Calm. Continue. Verse 14. Let them that dwell about Zion come, and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting have brought upon them. So he's saying, let them that dwell about Zion come. So the people that were round about, they seen, um, seen our captivity. They seen us get taken, but they're going to remember the captivity. They're going to know, they're going to know who we are when we're, when we're returning. So, the next scripture I want to go to is in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 47. So if you get that one for me, 1 Kings 8 and 47, and I'll get Malachi 4 and 6. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 47. Mm-hmm. And it says, Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and we have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then then hear their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. Mm -hmm. So you see, he's going to make them remember who we are. Mm. And they're gonna they're gonna have to remember, and they're gonna become our um our servants, and they're gonna have to have um what does it say compassion compassion mm. on us. 
And that's because they're going to realise that all their all their history was lies. Like it's like the scripture says, they'll say, surely we have inherited lies. Because they're going to understand that we are, are the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. We are the Israelites Come that on. were scattered. We were the we were the people that they sometimes held in derision, and they're gonna they're gonna ask questions. Why is this? How is it these people are the other chosen people? Because the lies have gone so far that they're in strong delusion that they don't that they don't know the truth, or that they love the love the lie so much that they wanted to stay in it. Because some people like to live in lies. But they're going to realise, man, that the Most High put us in captivity for our iniquity. And there's a scripture that says that that the heathen will know that he put us in captivity for our iniquity. Mm -hmm. So the next scripture that I want to read is in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 6. And it says... So we read from verse 5. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Most High. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So it's saying here that we have to turn, turn back to the fathers and learn what they knew. In terms of in terms of scriptures and culture and and things like that, because they also dwelt around Zion, mm. and we've got to remember the the captivity of of, of ourselves mm. as well. In order to, because if we don't understand that we're brought into captivity for our iniquity, also, how are we supposed to how are we supposed to correct ourselves mm. if we don't know that we was put in there for that reason? Then it just looks like it was a coincidence to us, mm-hmm. like it just happened, but it didn't just happen. It was put on us because we didn't follow the um, commandments of the Most High. Mm-hmm. So reading reading on in verse 15. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 15. 15. For he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation and of a strange language, who neither reverenced old man nor pitied child. So he brought a nation upon us from far and of a strange language. So what I want to do is I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. So we're going to go there, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 49. So Deuteronomy 28 and verse 49. The Most High shall bring a nation against thee from far. So again it's saying a nation from far. And from the end from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So they're going to come from far, and it's a tongue we won't understand. And it's like the scripture says there. It says, a nation from afar, a nation from, from far, and of a strange language. So he's talking about the same nation who neither reverenced old man nor pity child. And we know they didn't do that. Mm, and that's why it's important, very important that you understand history and understand the history of your family and what happened and, and those nations and what they did to us. Because they'll have you they'll have you forget, like I said, their, their MO or their plan is to get you to forget everything that's happened and just move forward. But that's not right. Remember... Um, the scripture says in Deuteronomy 32 and 7, remember the days of old and consider the years of many ger- generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee, thy elders and they will tell thee. And this goes links right to that scripture we read before because it's saying you have to um, ask or inquire of the previous generation because we by doing so, we show um, that we're studying to show ourselves approved and that we want to learn and that we have a love for the truth. 
Because the scripture says, if you don't have love of the truth, then he'll lead you up to strong de- delusion. And that's where we, we don't want to get to. Mm-hmm. To read verse 16. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 16. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. Mm -hmm. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. So it's the Most High that's going to deliver us from the enemies, saying, the land saying, well, what can I do to help you? But but we know that the Most High is going to come. The one that put the plagues on us is the one that's going to bring us back out because he's going to give us give us understanding and give us wisdom that this time we won't fall off. So I want to just read Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. And if you get me, 1 Samuel 2 and 6. So Isaiah 14 and verse 1. For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Most High for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. So here we can see that the Most High is going to have mercy on us. And he has had mercy on us. And that's why the curses are being lifted off now. And he's, he's the one that's going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. And then we're going to take them to our place. And they are going to be our servants there. And then if you just want to read um, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6. The most high killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So you can see that the most high lifts up, lifts up and takes down. Mm. You can see that he gives life and takes life. He is the one that gives and takes. Mm. So like he put the plagues on us, he's gonna take the plagues off us. Mm-hmm. Like he gave like he gave us a land and took it off us, he's gonna give it us back. Mm. He's the one that decides mm-hmm. what happens. And a precept for that um, is it Ecclesiastes three and eight. This is a time for love and a time for war. So the Most High, when He does or exacts judgment or when He punishes people for their sin, it doesn't mean that they're going to be altogether punished. He'll punish some people and then He can still bless them. So as long as we come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments and believe in Messiah that He came as it is written, and we preach the gospel of the kingdom then we stand a good chance of entering into the kingdom of Yah. Mm-hmm. And if you read verse 19. Baruch mm-hmm. chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, Go your way, O my children. Go your way, for I am left desolate. Mm-hmm. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Mm-hmm. So the desolation that is left in now is 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 its sackcloth of prayer, is its clothing of peace. Mm, so when no, you sorry, look- it's not the clothing of peace. Sorry, it's it's not the clothing of peace. It's the clothing clothing of mourning mm-hmm. because it's saying it's the land is saying I'm left desolate. Yeah, and there's no one here. The people that are supposed to be here aren't here, mm. and that's why it's desolate. And we weren't keeping the law, such as the commandments, so it was left desolate. So it's crying unto the Most High. That's what it's, it's in mourning. It's crying to the Most High. Mm, you got to understand that, as well. This is a um, spiritual analogy to say, so to say, or uh, like a parable. And you got to understand that um, this is a woman who who's lost her husband or her husband's died. So the land's in mourning. So the land can't look um, pretty and flourishing. Now, I know there's a doctrine out there that's being pushed that they say that Jerusalem or Zion is in um, in Africa or in America And one of the brothers saying that it's in America Is saying why would the Most High give us a small sliver of land in Israel When we could be in America that's flourishing With like um, greenery 
it looks like it's flowing with milk and honey and saying that looks more like the land the most high has but it's not because the most high wants the land to look like that the land can't look um pr pretty or nice or beautiful but simply because the husband's not there now if you're if a woman's husband dies you're not going to see her the first as soon after her husband dies walking around in her nicest clothes she's going to be in mourning and likewise when you go to um when you're in mourning for someone you wear dark clothing you wear black so a lot of times you'll see Israelites who go to Mount Zion and keep the feast. We wear black as a sign of mourning because we understand that um, Israel went for a spiritual death. So I just thought mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bring that out. Mm -hmm. So the clothing of peace is in the land's flourishing. Mm -hmm. But now he's cry she's crying onto the Mosai mm -hmm. to say, my children have gone, where mm -hmm. are they? Mm -hmm. Because... The, the land would nourish us, but we would also nourish the land. Yeah. So now, the land has no one there mm. and it's, de it's left desolate and alone. Mm -hmm. But we are we are supposed to be there, but because we weren't doing the right thing, the Most High doesn't want us there. But that's why we have to get right. And then the Most High, is the, now the Most High is calling us back there because now we've dis now we've understood that we were wrong and that we have to follow his law, statutes, and commandments. Zion has been revealed. So now he's saying it's time to come back and keep the feast, which all the men must come up to keep. And that and, and that's what's happening now. It's it's in a line of progression. And it's over a period of time. And as time's moving forward. It's the closer we get into the kingdom coming in because the Most High is moving and he's moving forward and forward and forward. But we have to move with the spirit as well, with the, with the Ruach HaKadosh. Mm. We have to move with his Holy Spirit. Khan. Because if we don't, if we don't move along with it, then we can get, we can get left behind. But we don't want to do that. We need to, we need to, um, help to build this kingdom because the gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So what we what we'll do is we'll continue reading on in verse 21. Baruch chapter 4 verse 21. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Most High and he shall deliver you from the power and the hand and hand of the enemies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read um, Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and if you want to get me Isaiah... 11.11 So Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68 and it says and the most high shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And when the scripture says buy there, it means redeem. But it say no man shall redeem you. So who will redeem you? The Most High will redeem you. That's who's redeeming us, the Most High. And that's what it says in the scripture. It says that he is the one that is going to redeem us. He is the one that's going to deliver us from the hand of our enemies. And if you want to read Isaiah 11, 11 for me. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an unsign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that's going to gather us. He's the one that's going to gather us from all the four corners of the earth. It's the most high that's going to do that. And the next one I'm going to read is in Micah chapter 4. And, and I'm going to read from verse 9. I'm going to read to verse 11. And it says, Now, why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counsellor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labour to bring forth, 
O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now thou shalt go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon, and there thou shalt be delivered, and there the Most High shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Now also many nations are gathered against thee, that say, Let her be defiled, let our eye look upon Zion. So you can see that the Most High, because he's saying even to Babylon, so we're in Babylon now, and and wherever you are, whoever's following those um, all these pagan traditions, because a lot of them come from Babylon, or is Babylon, mm. and we're all in our captivities, and we're all in there, and he says that's where he's going to deliver deliver us from. Mm -hmm. So when he's talking about Paphros, Kush, Shina, if you go anywhere. They a lot a lot of the places they're celebrating Christmas there, mm. which is a pagan festival, and a lot of the customs from that festival come from Babylon. Mm -hmm. And if everyone's celebrating it, if everyone in, in these countries is celebrating it, then they are Babylon too. Mm -hmm. They are spiritually Babylon. Oh, before you jump on, let me just get that scripture because what he's saying is very important. Israel really needs to understand this because there's a scripture, and let me pull it because I don't want to uh, misquote it. I make sure I get it correctly. But while he's getting that, yeah, it's it's important for us to understand that because we we have to we have to know that we are in our captivities and this is where he's gonna redeem us from. I got that scripture, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, so yeah. this is Romans chapter six and sixteen. Now listen to what this is what Paul's saying now. And he's speaking to um, the Romans, um, the Israelites in Rome. So he's saying, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether unto, of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So here it's letting you know that whoever you obey in terms of whether you're doing what's righteous, if you want to celebrate Christmas, then you're yielding yourself over to the devil because those things are of the devil. If you want to yield yourself over to Hamashiach, you have to do the, the feast that he says, those holy feasts, those set apart days. So who you yield yourself servants to obey, that, that's whose um, servant you are, that's who who's ma your master is. So it's important what we do because people think what they do doesn't matter because they don't see the, the punishment straight away. However, just because the punishment doesn't come straight away don't mean it's not coming because who your master is, that's how you, how your judgment's determined. If you want a good, um, if you want a blessing, then you need Yahweh as your master. If you mm. want punishment, then make the devil your master and continue in your pagan holidays, continue in, in sin, continue in um, a bad um, spirit or thought process when dealing with your brothers. All these things will mean that you're a servant to um, the devil but if you keep the law, statutes and commandments, then you're a servant to the Most High. Mm. And that's our aim. Okay. So, if you continue reading on this, we're in on verse 22 now. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 22. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you, and joy is come unto me from the Holy One. Because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Saviour. Mm -hmm. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yah will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Mm -hmm. So it's going to bring us out. Like as now the neighbours of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, which is come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. So... They seen so like like we were talking about before, our neighbors round about those round about Zion, they seen our captivity, but now they're gonna see our salvation, and this is what I'm saying. The scripture says that the heathen will know that we went into captivity for our iniquity. But the one scripture that I want to go to right now is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter five and verse two, and if you get me Isaiah sixty and verse three. Come on. So I've got Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and I'm going to read from verse 1 and it says Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him 
and made no account of his labors. So we already know this is talking about Israel. But how many people have we known? Have You know, when you came into the truth or when you started to learn about true history, how many times did you find out that an, an Israelite had made a certain item or a certain product and you thought it was a white man <laughs> that made it? Today. How many times? Mm. How many times have you seen that? They made no account of our labours. Mm. And um, the a lot of the um, buildings and a lot of the um, a lot of these companies and all that built off of free labour off of our people and they made no account of them and we're going to stand in great boldness before the faces of them that afflicted our ancestors that afflicted us in our in our times as well so we're going to stand in boldness because we're going to know that we we are now in the right position that we're supposed to be in and then it says in verse 2 when they see it they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for so they're going to see and it's going to be strange unto them because it's going to be so it's going to be so crazy when it happens that they're not going to know what to do because it, it was it was something that they didn't even they couldn't even think in their head that's how great the salvation is going to be and I'm just going to read on a bit, a bit as well. And it says, verse 3, and it says, And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in, in derision, derision and a proverb of reproach. So here you can see that they, 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 they're they going to be like, Well, how is it that is these these guys that are, are chosen? I thought, I just thought they were just nobodies. And I'm just. I'll read to verse five. And it says um, from verse four, and it says, "We fools accounted his life madness, and his his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of Yah, and his lot is among the saints?" So they're gonna they're gonna find they're gonna find it hard to understand it because they just thought we were, we were nobodies and nothing, and the fact that we are being that we are being we have been um, saved is going to be a cut to them and only because they had us in in slavery and in servitude for so long and it came to a point where they started to believe that we were nothing and nobodies but now but now because they are now because they're going to see this because even now they're seeing us come together and it's 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 weird for them because they're seeing it and they're like, well, why, why are these um, why are these brothers getting together? These Negroes. <laughs> yeah, why are they getting together? And like um, there's um, something called Project Megiddo. And in there, it has the Hebrew Israelites as some sort of... Um, hate as a, group. Yeah. As, as a hate group. Mm. Saying that... A threat, innit? Yeah, we're a threat. threat. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're, they're seeing it. They're seeing the change. We are, because we're a threat to their kingdom, because their kingdom's coming to an end, thus saith the Most High. So the time's coming now where we need to raise up. The scripture says we're going to take the kingdom. The scripture doesn't say we're going to sit back and the kingdom's going to come to us. Mm -hmm. We've got to be ready to take the kingdom. If Messiah comes and says we've got to go and take the kingdom, we've got to be ready to take the kingdom. That's why a lot of the Israelites have a very militant mindset. And sometimes you need to be militant because the people you're dealing with are your enemies. Mm -hmm. And unless you understand you that they're your enemies, what you're going to do, you're going to place yourself by them. Mm -hmm. And they're going to they're going to plan and plot to take your spot. Scripture says in um, is it, um, Ecclesiasticus, I think it's Ecclesiasticus 24 and 10. Um, but just double check it. It says never trust thine enemy and don't sit them beside you. So if you're going to set them beside you, it says, who pities a snake charmer who's bitten? If, if a snake charmer, if you see someone whose job is to charm snakes and you see you see the um, snake charmer get bitten, you're not going to pity him because that's what he does. That's his job. That's what he's used to. And he's putting himself around snakes. So the likelihood at some point he's going to get bitten because an animal is an animal. And if you if you push an animal into a corner for so long, eventually the animal's most likely going to bite. Mm -hmm. 
So if you want to read um, Isaiah 60 and 3. So this is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3. And it says, And the Gentiles shall come to the brightness, Salakia, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. Mm -hmm. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear mm -hmm. and be enlarged. So, so, yeah, so the main thing I wanted to get from that was the fact that they're going to come to the brightness of our rising. So they're going to see the salvation of the Most High, which is going to come upon us. And that's why it says the bright and brightness of the Most High, because they're going to see the glory of the Most High on us. Because we're finally going to be in the glory of the Most High once again. And they're going to see, and it's going to be like, like this little scripture before, it says the strangeness of their salvation. To mm. them, it's going to be strange mm. because they've never seen nothing like it. <laughs> so if we carry on reading in verse 25 in Baruch 4. Baruch chapter 4, verse 25. My children, suffer patiently. The wrath that is come upon you from Yah, for thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. So, you see, the Most High is saying that we're going to see the destruction of those that, that <coughs> came against us, our so enemies, like, yeah. and our enemies that persecuted us. And we're going to tread upon their neck because the things that they did unto us, we will do unto them. So what I want to do is, is I want to read from Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. So we're going to get that up. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. Like we said at the beginning, if you've got your Bibles, if you've got them open and turn to it, which sometimes it's better if you read it yourself because it helps stick in your memory. I know when I started getting precepts down, it's not easy to remember everything at once, but the more you write stuff down and more you read stuff with your eyes, you can commit it to long-term memory. Mm-hmm. So Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must, must be killed, killed with the sword. sword. Here is the patience, patience and the faith of the, the saints. saints. Mm -hmm. So he's showing you that who, who, that who took us into captivity is going to go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must, must be, be killed, killed with the sword. sword. And this is the patience and the faith of the saints. Because we're waiting. We're mm. waiting for the Most High to deliver us. Mm. We're waiting for that day to come. And that's what it says, my children, they suffer patiently. Suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yah. Because he's put that on us, mm. his wrath, yeah. But they are going to get the wrath now. Mm. It's going to be passed on to them. Remember and the that's because they furthered the affliction. So like, yeah, mm -hmm. so like yeah you, don't, don't, you have to remember scripture says, um, most says, vengeance is mine. So in these times where we're suffering patiently, yeah, we're going through um, hardship because we're under a curse. However, our time of blessings come in. Just keep the commandments and keep your head strong. The scripture says, endure in the faith. Because when the Most High comes back, the people who are um, wicked and evil will get their vengeance because the Most High will bring that upon them. It's not our time now to exact vengeance. Now is our time to perfect or better ourselves so that when the kingdom comes in, we're at a better chance to be able to keep everything. And we're going to be found worthy to um, to judge alongside Yahawashai and be one of the hopeful elect of the 144,000 or at least make it into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So if we continue on, verse 26. Um, Baruch chapter 4 and verse 26. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as the flock caught of the enemies. Mm -hmm. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yah, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. Mm -hmm. For as it was your mind to go astray from Yah, so being returned, seek him ten times more. So the first scripture I want to go to is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 4. So we're going to go there, Jeremiah 50 and verse 4. And that says, in those days and in that time, saith the Most High, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Most High, their power. 
they shall ask the way to Zion with their faith faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Most High in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. So you see, we're going to join ourselves back to the Most High in a perpetual covenant, and that's the new covenant, and, and that one won't be forgotten. And we're going to join ourselves again with the Most High. And we've got to seek him ten that's what it says, seek him ten times more. And then if we go to John chapter fourteen and verse fifteen, and if you want to get me Jose one and ten. John Jose John chapter fourteen and verse fifteen. I got that. So, so that's Jose chapter one verse ten. It says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. So here it's like we we're saying before, they're going to see all these things that come from all these blessings, same way they've seen us go through cursing, same way. Um, the strangers or the people around about Zion, people around about Israel are going to see that we are the children of the living power. And same way those people told us, you ain't Israel, you ain't Jews. You're not Jewish, as they all say, because they don't understand or they lack understanding. Then the same people, they're going to understand and see that we actually are those children. We are the descendants of those people written about. <coughs> mm -hmm. So when we read in John chapter 14 and 15, Hamashiach saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. So, we've got to seek him, we've got to seek the Most High, and we've got to seek the commandments of the Most High, and we've got to keep the commandments. If you love Hamashiach, then you love the Most High, because he didn't come speaking his own words. So mm. when he says, keep my commandments, he means keep Yahweh's commandments. Yeah? And when he came, he didn't come to do away with the law. And it says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, I didn't come to do, I don't think not that I am come to destroy the law. I have, not um, I, have, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm. So he didn't come to. He didn't come to like say that was null and void because it isn't. The whole of the scriptures is a narrative that we have to follow. That we have to read, and once you get the narrative, then you'll get the understanding of what the Most High is going to do. Mm. Why does it say ten times more? Because a lot of this um, scriptures, it's very spiritual the way the book is written. The Most High put the Spirit on men that they'd write things down. <coughs> so we have to question why would he say, when you seek him this time, seek him ten times more. Now, you can link that to many numbers throughout the Bible. Now, the ten, would you, first thing that should come to mind is the Ten Commandments. So uh, we at least... When we come back into the truth, we need to be keeping the ten. That includes keeping Shabbat, keeping Sabbath. So those ten are are the um, foundation to keeping the law. And even if there are some that you can't keep, you understand that the keeping of the law is righteous. Mm -hmm. um, read verse 29. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 29. For he have brought these plagues upon you. Salakia, it says, for he that hath brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy again with your salvation. Take good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Mm -hmm. Verse 31, it says, miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For mm -hmm. I will take uh, away the rejoicing. Hang on. hang on. We'll go to um, Joel chapter 2 and verse 3. So if you get, um, you get me Revelation 18 and 11. Okay. Revelation chapter 18 and 11. Mm -hmm. So, Joel chapter 2 and verse 3. A fire devoured before them, and behind the flame, behind them a flame burneth. The land is as a garden of Eden before them, 
and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. And what I'll do is, I'll read up a bit, and I'll read up from verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Most High cometh, for it is night at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. And as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and the strong, they have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as a garden of Eden before them, and a desolate wilderness, and, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. So nothing, so the land is going to be as the Garden of Eden before us, which is Zion, which is the land, and the desolate wilderness behind us. All these, all these um, captivities that we're in, a lot of them are going to get destroyed. They're going to be desolate wildernesses, and especially Babylon, especially those, especially those like America, those places are going to get wiped out completely. And if you read um, Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all dyeing wood and all manner of manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors mm -hmm. and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat mm -hmm. and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men mm -hmm. so they're gonna they're gonna weep because they ain't getting no more money mm -hmm. it's because that's what it is for them mm -hmm. That's why it says the um, the love of money is the root of all evil. evil. Mm. Because these kingdoms, they love money. Mm. And it's not about money. Because we would have been trading before this. Mm. It would have been a trade for a trade. Mm. So you would have done work for someone. They would have done work for you. And yeah, stuff like that. That's because they're the bottomless pit though, isn't it? They're insatiable. So the thing with Western societies, you'll see they'll rape, rob and murder. And then when they've raped, robbed and murdered, rather than being satisfied with all the um, riches they've got from rape, rob and murder, they continue to rape, rob and murder some more to get more money and to get more riches and gold and land because nothing they have is of their own. They just steal and rob and murder. Mm -hmm. So then we'll read um, Jeremiah 16 and 19 and it says, O oh, Most High, my strength, my fort and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. So you can see here that they're gonna have to accept that they've been taught lies, that their fathers inherited lies. And that they were told they were told lies their whole life, and that the truth is that we are the children of the Most High, and that they are gonna have to serve one the Most High, and then us, and they're gonna have to swallow it, swallow swallow the the pill. Because if they don't, then like 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 with us, we were put to death. We became the valley of dry bones. And the same way, the nation that will not keep his commandments, the nation that will not come up and serve him, they will be put to death. Khan. So, what we'll do is we'll continue on then again, back in Baruch. And we're in verse 34. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. Yes, because they, they 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 have pride, so much pride. Look at this great nation that we are. Look how great we are. Look at what we've done. 
But Let, let's make America great again. America was never great. Pride. Mm-hmm. And like in Daniel, when when you hear um you hear about the little horn that came forth, let me get that. Let me get that all. Because these nations, they're so haughty, they're so prideful. Mm, let me grab that scripture precept. Because you need to know, you need to know what happens when someone's haughty or prideful, and the scripture should jump into your head. And the little horn is in the dream of the beast that Daniel had. And I wanna I wanna pick out this little one because there's loads of breakdowns on the um on the beast. But I want to pick out this little bit and it says um, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8 and it says I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things because this this little horn is America or or Babylon and the speak the speaking great things speaking great things is them being prideful and being boastful about what they've done. And the thing is is that with that as well, they've they've spread lies because Christopher Columbus did not find America. That's a lie. And there's many lies they've told and they've made out like they didn't go around rape, robbing and murdering. And that's what they were doing. So they've told lies and boasted themselves to be a great nation when their nation was built on lies. So did you have that scripture that you wanted to read out? Because it is very important. It says Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So anyone who's prideful and haughty and bigged up themselves more than they should, including America, not just America, because when we say Babylon, Babylon relates to America, but also to um, the Western society, Europe, and a lot of these countries that are, are all confederate against Israel. And the more prideful they get, the, the cl- closer we're getting to their fall. And we know we're in that time period now where we're just waiting. We're having the faith, um, the patience and the faith of the saints. And we know who the saints are. And you can find those scriptures in Psalm 50 and 5. And, um, and there's in Psalm 50 and 5. You can find that scripture in Psalm 50 and 5. And we understand that that means the fall is soon to come. So they're going to have to um, suck, um, like it or lump it. There's no way around it. So if they continue to be prideful, which we know they will because scripture says they will, that our kingdom is at hand, our kingdom is nigh because their kingdom's coming to an end and our kingdom can now be, start to begin to come in. Mm-hmm. So read in verse 35. In... Baruch mm-hmm. chapter, 30, verse, chapter 4 verse 35. And it says, For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, And she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from Mm Yah. And what we'll do is, um, if you get 1 Kings chapter 8 Mm -hmm. and verse 47, because I think we read that before, but we'll read that again. And we're going to get 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 37. First Kings chapter eight verse forty seven. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither mm-hmm. they were carried captives and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely; we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Their st- the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name. 
-hmm. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and mm -hmm. maintain their cause, mm -hmm. and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, mm -hmm. and all their transgressions wherein they have mm -hmm. transgressed against thee, and give mm -hmm. them compassion before them who carried them mm -hmm. captive, that they may have compassion on them. Mm -hmm. And then what I want to do is I'm going to read Second Chronicles because it says the same thing. And it says, Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, and we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives and pray toward their land, so it's looking towards the east, which thou gave us unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name, which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. So it's the same same prayer, but what I want you to understand is that it's saying, look to the east and look look for the um the redemp look for our redemption. That's what it's saying. It's looking to say, look for the well and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from Yah, which is which is the mercy, which is the um. Redemption of the Most High, who's redeeming us? Because no man's gonna redeem us, but He will redeem us, mm. and that's what He's gonna come to do. He's gonna come to redeem us. So then, if we read um, verse thirty-seven, see the last verse in Baruch four. Baruch four, chapters thirty-seven, chapter four, verse thirty-seven. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One. Rejoicing in the glory of Yah. So we're going to be gathered back together from the east and from the west because we were scattered into the four corners of the earth. So we didn't just go one place. We didn't just go just just to, uh, just into the west. We were scattered across the four corners because the northern tribe was taken first by Assyria, and then we would then Judah was taken by by the um, southern no by Babylon. And they were taken, and then they were taken by many other nations after that came after them, until they were taken by the Romans and are scattered. So we were scattered into the four corners, but we're going to be gathered together by the word of the Most High, because He has spoken it. So what I want is, um, if you could get Jeremiah chapter thirty-one and verse six to nine, and I'll get. Um, Luke chapter 13 and verse 29 so Luke chapter 13 verse 29 and I'm going to read from verse 24 I'll read from verse 23. And it says, Then one said unto him, Master, and this is someone talking to a Mashiach, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Master, Master, open unto us, and he shall say unto he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say unto you, he, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of Yah. And you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. And shall sit down in the kingdom of Yah. So when it says, he, when you shall see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Because those are the three, three patriarchs of Israel. And they, 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 that's the line that he went through. Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob. And that's where the bless. That's where the um, what's the word? The promises lied, 
with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And th- and they are the ones. So Jacob is the one that is going to be sitting, that is going to come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and be and sit down in the kingdom of Yah. That's who's going to be there. Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's who we're going to see there. And if you want to read the scripture, what, is, it Jer- is it Jeremiah 31? Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 31, mm. 6 to 9. Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 6 to 9 For there shall be a day that the watchman upon Mount Ephraim Upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry Arise ye let us go up to Zion Unto the Most High our power For thus saith the Most High Sing with gladness for Jacob And shout among the chief of the nations Mm -hmm. Publish ye praise ye And say O Most High Save thy people the remnant of Israel Behold, I will bring them from north country and gather them from mm-hmm. the coast of the earth mm-hmm. and with them the blind and the lame, mm-hmm. the woman with child and her mm-hmm. that travaileth with child together. Mm-hmm. A great company shall return thither. Mm-hmm. They shall come weeping and with supplication. Uh, will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Mm-hmm. So you can see that the Most High is going to gather us But the, the uh, main point that I want to point out is that it says um, A watchman upon Mount Ephraim And we know of a man called Hoshua And we say this a lot That knows that he's from the lineage of Ephraim And he put the call out for us to return And for us to come back and keep the three feasts So this is the beginning of the gathering And if you want to be a part of it Then you have to come up and, and keep the free for the feast three times in the year, which is the unleavened bread, which is um Pentecost or Feast of Weeks and Tabernacles. And you have to all the men of Israel should be keeping it in Jerusalem at the set appointed times. And you have to understand that that is that is what has to, that is what has to take place. And it's begun to take place because people are coming up three times in the year. So it's important for us to do that. And what I want to do is I want to take us to Deuteronomy 16 and 16 as well. So if you get that for me as well. Um, but yeah, by because the Most High said that we're going to come back and we're going to be doing the right thing. So, and he's going to give us a heart of flesh. I'll but, that. All right, then, if you want to just read that for That's me. That's Deuteronomy 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Most High thy power in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Week, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Most High empty. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessings of the Most High thy power which he have given thee. Mm-hmm. So all the men of Israel... Must appear before the Most High, and the Most High's face is in Zion, and that's where He's going to gather us to, to His holy, to His holy mount, to His His holy land, which He gave to our forefathers. So it's for us to take it back. It's for us to go back, and to take it. He will. He is gathering us. He's teaching us. He's showing us. He's opening our eyes. But it's for us to make a move. This is how he's gathering us. He's gathering us by teaching us and showing us what to do. We've got a blueprint. And that's the scriptures. And the more and more we learn, the more and more we get understanding, is the more and more, is the more and more we'll know what to do. But the headquarters is Zion. And that is where we're going to learn majority of our stuff. Because the law will come forth out of Zion. And that's what the scriptures say. So is there anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, to that? and because we're coming to the end now, and because we've mentioned the gospel of the kingdom, because we've mentioned going up to Mount Zion and keeping the free feet, it's of utmost importance when we go out and preach the gospel, we speak of this woman, the memorial of this woman, because the scripture will make it clear. So if you're going to come to this scripture with me, you can read along with me. This is... Um, Matthew chapter 26 and I'm going to read from verse 6 
So Matthew chapter 26 verse 6 and it says now when Yahawashai was in Bethany by the house of Simon the leper there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it they had indignation saying to what purpose is this waste for this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahawashai understood it he said unto them why trouble ye the woman for she have wrought a good work upon me for ye have the poor always with you but me ye have have not always for in that she have poured this ointment on my body she did it for my burial verily I say unto you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world there ought there shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her so this is what we're closing out with and it's important because Messiah says wherever the gospel is preached. Now what gospel did Messiah come preaching? He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom, that the kingdom of heaven is nigh for Israel and that we're going to be gathered back and enter our kingdom and, and rule our, have our rule over our kingdom and a king over our kingdom which will be Messiah and that we must make a remem memorial for this woman for she wrought a good work for Messiah. And she anointed him unto his burial. So in this we remember what Messiah said and what Messiah did. And what this woman who would represent the elect and the 144,000 um, have done. So in that I just want to say thank you for listening. I hope you understood the breakdown. I know there's a lot of precepts in that. And I know it's not a short video. Um, but if you listen, I pray you got some edification and um, read through another chapter maybe you never read through before. Um, and with that, I'm just going to say um, Shalom and peace and blessings to all the rest of the Akiyam pushing this truth wholeheartedly. And as it is written, I've been Brother Yardan. I've mainly been the reader for this and um, praise praises to the Most High. Yeah, Shalom, Shalom. Um, yeah, so that was the breakdown of um, Baruch 4. All praises to the Most High. I hope you got something from this. Um, but yeah, um, we're going to continue to do videos and try and put stuff out there. Um, and we're always learning ourselves. So we're trying to get understanding, get, get um, wisdom from the Most High. Because he says he only dwells with us anyway. So it's for us to take hold of what he's given us. And for us to try and utilise what he's given us. Because he's, he's given us enough to do what we have to do in this time and we need to help to wake up our brothers and sisters who are still sleeping and then bring them up to zion so i'd like to give all praises to the most high um all praises to yahweh Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. and send send again blessings out to all the akiam preaching the gospel of the kingdom with understanding out there in the four corners of the earth. Shalawam and Shalawam. Walla walla.